Welcome to the boiler DIY tutorial about repressurizing a Worcester boiler. As you know, combi boilers are very energy efficient, uh, but they have only got one downside to it. Uh, so it doesn't matter uh, what make and what model they are. Uh, almost all the uh, combi boilers require uh, topping up the pressure at some point in their lifetime. Uh, it's mostly uh, once in a year or twice a year uh, thing. However, if you've been uh, uh, topping up um, quite often, uh, it either means uh, the inter internal mechanism of the boiler has uh, gone wrong or uh, there is a leak in your heating system. Uh, either way, uh, please have a word with uh, your uh, boiler or a gas engineer when you service your boiler uh, next time. You must get your boilers serviced at least once in a year. Uh, in the case of uh, Wooster boilers, they come with a five-year warranty and uh, the, f the warranty is actu actually void if you don't get your uh, service done annually. So make sure you do that and get uh, the box ticked in your uh, warranty page. Wooster boilers are now part of the Bosch group, uh, which I guess signifies the quality of boilers uh, they are, that they are. Um, there are several models in this. Uh, what I've got is uh, a Green Star 30 model, but the process of repressurizing should be pretty much identical for uh, most of the models. Mainly, there are three kinds of uh, repressurizing techniques. Uh, one is the uh, key filler technique, uh, so you get a, a plastic key which you need to use, and the other one is external filling loop. And the third uh, method, which is probably pretty much well known these days, is the key keyless filling uh, method. Uh, we're going to look at the filler key method in this video, uh, although I'll be uh, uh, also taking you through the other two methods in the end. Make sure that you have a plastic tray or a bowl ready that you can keep right uh, below the boiler to avoid any water puddle. Uh, switch off the mains. Uh, please do that before you proceed further. Just switch it off. Give it a couple of seconds and uh, try gently to open the, the front tray and see what the pressure is. In my case it's fallen well below uh, the optimal. It's right on minimum. Um, so close the tray and open the bottom tray now. Um, open it gently because it's got uh, a bit of a funny locking system. Um, you'll know it once you try it for the first time. So unlock it, uh, open it up and as you can see there um, you will find uh, a filler key. If you, if you don't find one it's probably missing or maybe your boiler needs the other methods uh, to repressurize it. So Note that arrow and uh, those two uh, rings there. So this is the view from the bottom of the boiler. Uh, the apparatus that you can see in the yellow circle is the filler loop. So if we have a close look at that, uh, you'll see uh, an open padlock and a closed padlock uh, and the white knob. Um, make sure that you insert the filler loop uh, key and uh, give it a gentle push. And once you can't push it any further, turn the arrow towards the open padlock and then give it another push so that should take it completely in and then turn it back into the closed padlock. Uh, here I just show the previous uh, steps in, in action. So once you insert the filler key, make sure you lock it and then turn the white knob anti-clockwise to make sure the water flows in. You can actually hear the water gushing in. Make sure you keep an eye on the pressure gauge that you don't let too, mu too much of uh, water in. And when it reaches the optimal pressure, uh, close the loop. You can do so by turning the white knob clockwise. Once you're done with that, carefully uh, remove the key, the filler, filler loop key, uh, by simply following the previous steps in reverse order. Um, point it towards the open padlock position on a gentle pull. 
So once you're done with it, uh, clean the key off any residue water and uh, please put it back in its original position to make sure that you don't displace it. Um, close the front door of the boiler, um, put the tray back in its original position. Once everything is safe, uh, now it's time to turn on the boiler. Uh, let the boiler settle for a couple of seconds. Once that's done, uh, try to turn a tap, uh, the hot water tap uh, in the house, uh, and make sure the, the, the blue light is on, which means the gas, is, the gas has fired. Um, also, make sure the pressure is maintained at uh, the level that you have already set which is 1.5 in my case. Uh, turn the uh, central heating on and make sure that uh, um, the boiler is still working. If you have any times, uh, timer settings, please, oh, please override them to make sure the boiler is turned on. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, In case you don't insert the filler key properly, uh, you'll see water drip like so. Uh, make sure you open the uh, knob, the turn the knob gently so that you know you notice it before it's too late. So let me repeat the steps. Insert the key, uh, gentle push in, and then turn the arrow towards the open padlock. And now push it again, and that should take it completely in and then turn it back to the close padlock to make sure it's secure and then simply turn the white knob. Now let's quickly look at the external filling loop system. Um, you should find a hose uh, which you need to connect to the both ends and uh, once you fit it securely uh, you have to turn the valve screw in the direction of the pipe which will let the water in. And once that's done, once you repressurize it, uh, re undo the steps and undo the uh, hose and secure it safely. As for the keyless uh, filler loop system, you should find a, a blue handled apparatus. All you need to do is simply pull it uh, gently and uh, you'll, you should be able to let the water in. And once you're done with uh, repressurizing and once the press pressure is at the optimal 1.5 bar, just leave uh, the, the handle and it should go back to its original position. 